Hello, physics students. Welcome to experiment eight, coefficient of friction. Remember that your purpose is to determine whether or not your variable influences the coefficient of kinetic friction. Your variable may have been mass It may have been surface area, or it may have been surface type. So you'll only be focusing on one variable in your lab. And remember also that we're looking at the coefficient of kinetic and static friction, not the forces of static and kinetic friction. So you're going to have to do a calculation to determine the coefficient. Materials, you will need to adjust these in your lab write-up depending on exactly what you used. Um, we actually used force probes instead of spring scales. We used string, blocks. Um, some of you used fabric in different surface types. Um, we also used electronic balances instead of triple beam balances. So please update your materials list accordingly. Your procedure, you will need to write your own procedure. And remember, the procedure needs to tell us how did you collect your data? What did you do to collect data? And what data did you collect? This lab must be written up on separate sheets of paper. Um, to, today in class, you'll actually have access to computers so that you can type this if you wish. If you don't have access to a computer, you may um, write it up longhand. Okay, so again, you either chose uh, mass, surface area, or texture as your variable. Um, and then again, we're working with static and kinetic friction force for both trials. Remember your spring scale, oh, you didn't use a spring scale, but um, if you measured something in grams, the proper units for mass are kilograms, so you're gonna have to make a conversion. Um, also remember that if you ever need to convert kilograms to newtons, kilograms times 9.81 gives you newtons. Okay, um, this also is a misnomer. We are not going to graph forces of friction. We're going to be graphing coefficients of friction on the vertical axis. And then you're going to put your variable on the horizontal axis. So essentially, you're going to create two graphs. You're going to create a, a graph with your variable, it might be mass, it might be surface area, it might be surface type on the x-axis, and then you're going to have coefficient of static friction on the y-axis. Then you're going to do this again your variable, and then coefficient of kinetic friction. And again, that's coefficient of friction, not force of friction. Okay, you've already gathered your data, so we've already used the force probes. Um, let's talk about the components that you need to cover in your um, lab report. You need to have a purpose. Again, your purpose was to determine whether or not your variable influenced the coefficients of kinetic and static friction. You need to, um, you need to clearly list your materials. You need to clearly list your procedures. And again, procedures are procedures for collecting data. What data did you collect should be listed in your procedure. Data, you should have a professional looking data table and then you'll have two graphs, but you'll only do one of these. Either, either you'll do surface type or mass or surface area. You'll need to have a section where you analyze your data and you talk about whether or not there is a relationship between your variable and the coefficients of kinetic and static friction. Then you'll need to write a conclusion. Let's take a minute and look at what your conclusion should look like. I have some samples here from previous years. Um, oops, but I'm on the wrong page. Here's a sample of a conclusion that wasn't so great. This student wrote, one source of error in this lab that I found would not be having a constant speed for each trial. 
By having a different speed, this could affect how the graphs turn out and what the value for kinetic and static friction would be. To fix this, we would use something that always had a constant speed and we would could hook up the wood block to this. Another error that I found would be where we pulled the wood block. I noticed in our lab that we did some of our trials pulling the wood block on one surface and then the next day we pulled the block on a different area of the same surface. This is an error because to fix the surface may be affected differently in different areas. To fix this, I could make sure we finished the lab in the same day and we constantly use the same surface. So the, stu the student here did a good job with some good error analysis ideas, but they missed whether the findings supported the hypothesis and they missed what the group learned in the experiment. So because of those two things that are missing, this would come out as, a, as about a D. Let's look at a better one. Here's another conclusion from previous year. In this lab, we used a force probe to measure the static and kinetic frictions of the weight being pulled on a block of wood. Our hypothesis stated that there would be no relationship between the coefficients of friction and mass and weight. We know this because when the points were graphed, the slopes of the lines were very close to zero, meaning there was no relationship. So this is um, a bit um, unclear. Um, some sources of error could include a misreading of the static and kinetic forces on the graph and calculator since the kinetic force was an average. See the picture of the graph above. To solve this error, you could do more than one trial for each weight and average the data out. Also, the table used to pull the weights might not have been completely smooth, causing the surface area not to be constant. To solve this, we would need a perfectly smooth surface. Another source of error would be could include that when the block was pulled, the speed of the pull was not consistent every time. To minimize this problem, the same person could pull the block every time. So we have some comments on the side here, um, some comments on how things could be worded better. Um, and the biggest problem here is that there is some lack of clarity um, in one of the sources of error. Let's look at an excellent um, that was that one, by the way, would have earned about a B minus. Let's let's look at an excellent conclusion. This person states, our findings support our hypothesis. We suppose that of the textural combinations we tested, the felt and the scouring pad would have the highest coefficients of static and kinetic friction, while the wood in the counter would have the lowest. This turned out to be true as the felt cowering spot scouring pad coefficients were the greatest, while the wood counter ones were the lowest. See the data table above. There were several possible sources of error. For one, we had to estimate the forces of kinetic friction because although the graph was accurate, we had to approximate the average force for the horizontal portion of the line. Secondly, the surfaces that we pulled the block across may have been inconsistent in terms of friction. Any rough patches or smooth areas would have affected our data. Also, the block may not have been pulled at a consistent rate for every trial. For some surfaces, notably the scouring pad, it was difficult to pull the block at an even rate, causing the force graph to be less easy to read. To fix these errors, we could use the max-min function on the calculator, use more even surfaces, and use a machine to ensure that the block is pulled consistently. From this lab, we learned how to use a CBL to measure force, how to calculate the coefficient of friction from experimental data, and how to find the forces of static and kinetic by looking at a graph of force. Okay, so this student hit all of the criteria, developed everything in detail, and wrote fluently. So this was well done, and, and this would earn an A. Today, as you're working in your groups to write, please consider breaking up the work. Give a couple of people the task of making the graphs and working in Logger Pro. Give the rest of the group the task of writing the procedure, writing the conclusion, and then put it all together into one document that you will turn in. Um, this lab will be due on Monday, and you'll be able to ask me questions on Friday. However, we will not have work time in class on Friday. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon.